This lecture is on composite pattern. Let's consider this uh, system. Suppose you are asked to develop a graphic system. Uh, in this graphical system, uh, you may have a line, rectangle, text, or pictures. And here, a picture may contain some lines and uh, also some rectangles or those, some text or some pictures. For example, here a picture contains a picture, a line, and a rectangle. And uh, this picture also contains some text, a text, a uh, line, and also a rectangle object. So what we notice is that in this system, the objects have this uh, containment relationship. So this picture object contains a picture object, a line object, and also a rectangle object. And further, this picture object contains a text object, a line object, and a rectangle object. So how to deal with, uh, uh, how to design such a system? Well, dealing with the line, rectangle, or text is simple because they don't contain other stuff. But uh, how to design this picture class? Because this picture class may contain zero more lines, also zero more rectangles, or zero more text, and so on. So we need to have a, so the straightforward way to design this is to have a vector of line pointers, a vector of rectangle pointers, a vector of text pointers, and a vector of picture pointers. And those pointers, uh, for example, if uh, uh, this picture contains three lines, then we insert these three lines, uh, three line objects into this uh, uh, line uh, vector. And if there's no lines, then this vector is empty. And for operations that they need to go through all the children of a picture, for example, you want to print out this picture and then you have to print out every component in this uh, picture. So that you have to, uh, you got to have a loop over all the line pointers, and also a loop for all the uh, rectangle objects, and a loop all over all the text objects, and also a loop over all the picture objects. So then you are going to have four loops over the four vectors respectively. So this design is not good. Why? Consider this. What if in the future you want to add us another class, for example, say circle, right? So currently you only deal with line, rectangle, text, and so on. So you don't have uh, circles. What if later on you want to add another circle class? Then you have to change existing classes because uh, for the existing classes, you already have programmed this picture. This, you already have this picture class. Now, because you add this circle class, because the picture may contain lines, pointers, or rectangles, um, a picture may contain lines, rectangles, or text may also contain circles. So you have to add a new vector of uh, circle pointers in your picture class. And also, for all the operations in a picture class that need to go through all the children, you need to add another loop over the circle vector because, uh, uh, for example, say print. Now, because of the objects, you may you may have some uh, this picture object making in some circle objects. So you have to have a loop go over all the objects in a circle uh, vector and uh, print them out. And then remember, our principle is uh, we want to avoid making changes to existing classes. Remember, recall the software engineering principle of anticipation for change. So for this problem that we are dealing with, it has two key characteristics. One is the objects have this part of relationship. They have this containment relationship. And also this containment relationship, or we say this part of relationship, are often, is often recursive. And there are two types of objects in, uh, in this system. We have leaves that don't that do not contain any other stuff. Uh, leaves, other I mean objects, and we have uh, uh, composites. Composites contains 
leaves and also may contain composites themselves. This it contain other composites objects. And also for these leaves and composites there are common operations such as say print, right? So often to perform an operation for a composite object we need to go through go over all its children. For example we to print out a picture you need to go through all its children and print them out. In real life there are many problems have these two characteristics. For example say graphics right with the example we just covered you have line, rectangle, text, picture, circle, circle and so on. And they have this part of relationship a picture may contain lines, rectangles, text, pictures and circles. And they have common operations say draw, draw the picture. Another example is uh, the equipment. You may have floppy disk, network card, and chassis and cabinets. And they have this part of relationship. A chassis may contain floppy, di floppy disks and network cards and so on. And a cabinet may contain floppy disk, network cards, chassis, and cabinets themselves. And also they have common operations. Say, for example, we want to calculate the amount of power that uh, uh, an equipment need to use and also we may want to calculate the price um, for an equipment. Another example is expressions, right? We have variables, literals, negate and binary expressions. And here for this uh, the part of this relationship is that a binary expression is composed by two expressions and two, the two expressions can be add, subtract, uh, multiply or divide. And there are common operations, so for example, we calculate the value of this expression or we print out this expression. So to deal with the problems with such a uh, part of relationship and also they have uh, common operations, the design pattern for this is called composite pattern. So for this composite pattern, we first introduce an abstract class and serve as the base for all the leaves classes and all the, all the composite classes. So here we have the line, rectangle, and text, and also we have pictures, and we artificially introduce a base class called graphics. And this is why I say artificially introduced, because when you see the description of such system, you don't uh, see anywhere we mention there's a graphics component, right? So so we introduce an abstract abstract class, we call it graphics, and let all these leaves, these are leaves, and uh, and all the composites here, the composite is picture, and you may have multiple composites classes. And let all this derive from this base class, this abstract class. And in this abstract class, we define the common interfaces that all the leaves and all the composites need to have. For example, say draw. Draw for the line, rectangle, text, or pictures, they all need to have this draw operation. And also to implement uh, this operation for the composite of most of the time, we need to go through all the components of this composite basically go through all the children of this composite and uh, call the, their corresponding operation is a draw operation, right? In this example here, draw, we need to go for all the children in this graph is we need to call this draw uh, operation. And uh, so first we introduce this uh, abstract base class and serve as the base class for all the leaves and all the Composites, and second, we let the, all these uh, leaves and uh, composite inherit from this base, and third, let uh, in each composite class we introduce a vector of uh, uh, abstract class pointers. So in this in this composite, we need to have a vector of the base class pointers, and uh, this vector will serve as the container containing. Uh, all the children that this uh, uh, composite uh, contains. And in the client, in the client, when you insert 
stuff into this picture, the objects, the pointer can be a line pointer, rectangle pointer, a text pointer, and also could be a po uh, picture pointer. So now let's take a look of uh, 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 this UML diagram. So we have this base class. Uh, this is abstract class, so it's uh, italic. And also there's uh, this common interface to draw and uh, typically there's no reasonable implementation. Uh, there's no reasonable default implementation. So we make it a pure virtual function. So th this is italic here. And for the composite, for the composite classes, we typically need to have the uh, operations of add a children, add a child, and remove a child, and also get a child. So add, remove, and get a child. Because this uh, composite contains uh, a vector of uh, uh, children. So this is the UML diagram for the composite, uh, composite pattern. And there are two key design virtues for this composite pattern. First, this one avoid making changes to existing classes. When we add new leaf classes, or in the future when we need even add new composite classes, we do not need to make changes to existing leaves, and also we do not need to make changes to existing uh, composite classes. It's easy to understand that we don't need to make changes to leaves, and the, the key good benefit is that we do not need to make changes to existing uh, uh, composite classes. For example, when you introduce another leaf, say a uh, circle, the composite uh, class picture you don't need to change. Although after you introduce this uh, new leaf of circle, a child of a picture maybe could be a, a circle now but this leaf but this uh, composite picture class you don't need to change it because the container uh, in this picture is a vector for the base class pointers and base class pointers can point to any objects of the derived class second is uh, the polymorphism so here the way to implement this is uh, we define this in common interface as a pure virtual function and uh, in the base class and uh, in each leaf and each composite for this operation we implement uh, this op uh, this common interface and here when for this composite when we go through all its children we do not need to distinguish whether this ch a child is a line, a rectangle, text, or a circle. We just blindly call it the draw operation on this because this base class pointer can point to objects of any derived class. And because this is a virtual function, so uh, which function will be called depends on depends on which object this, G, this child points to. Now let's take a look of uh, an example. Here in this example, we have a file and uh, a directory. So a directory, a file direct. I mean, uh, in the file direct file file system, you may have file objects and uh, directory objects, and directory objects may contain. Uh, some files and also may contain some further some directories and these directories can further contain some other files and directories and so on it's a recursive so to design such a system obviously based on what we just learned we need to use the composite pattern so for composite pattern we first need to introduce artificially introduce a base class we can call it entity and we can put the common uh, data into this uh, base class. So for example, uh, we can have a name, right? Both file and directory, they ha have a name. And also they may have a size, right? So we can uh, put the size here. And this is the constructor. This is constructor. And uh, 
here we may have a function say get name uh, this one we we can just return this name so we do have a reasonable annotation so we just return name and we can may have get size so we can provide an annotation and here for this operation of print um, there's no reasonable an annotation because uh, printing for a file printing a directory that different so here we make a pure virtual function we make it a pure virtual function and again notice that although this is uh, because we have a pure virtual function here this is a uh, abstract class and uh, although this class is abstract it still need a constructor now let's take a look at the file class file class need to publicly inherit from this uh, base class and need to implement this print operation all right now let's take a look of this directory class so the directory class also publicly inherits from this uh, base class and in this uh, this is a composite we need to have a vector of base class pointers so we have vector of entity pointers and this is a director uh, this is constructor constructor and uh, and this is the destructor so for the destructor we just go through uh, the loops go go through all the uh, children and delete them and this is add remove and get child and uh, we may also have a get child size uh, and uh, so get how many children you have and this is the uh, uh, the operation uh, the implementation of this print operation in direct directory class and here for add entity is simple you just push uh, this entry uh, is entity pointer you just push it uh, to this uh, vector store in this vector and uh, increase the size increase uh, because this uh, directory uh, inherit from entity and entity has this size so you just uh, add this uh, uh, increment this uh, size by th the size of this en entry and this is a remove entity so we have entity pointer when we want to remove that and here we call this uh, remove uh, function this is defined in this algorithm uh, package so this one uh, the first uh, parameter is uh, uh, we get the iterator of uh, of this uh, vector the beginning of that and end of that we get the position of uh, uh, the beginning and end and then we give this entry so this will function will remove this uh, uh, entry from this vector and uh, after we remove that we need to reduce the size right here's so we reduce the size here get child we just get the add child return uh, ent entries i and uh, get children size you just return this uh, size uh, function on this vector so that's directory now let's take a look of the main function all right so in the uh, main function basically in the client we instantiate the d1 directory this is a directory object and we add a couple files objects into that and then we instantiate the directory uh, d2 and add three files into that and uh, add another directory d3 and uh, add d1 and d2 to that and we call the print function on d3 let's take a look compile fine and when we run okay so yeah the um, font size here is pretty small so you can right click and increase the font size all right so this is the printout of um, this main function